RC. Sir. Oh, he's a big Dallas old joker. Big as hell. Yeah. When he when he first tweeted me, uh, this is Alexis <laughs> Ohanian. What's up, everybody? Alexis Ohanian, by the way. Uh, when he first tweeted me, though, you know, you always got to go check before you respond. Right? I got to see how big you, were, you are. You're a suspect. Yeah, you got you to gotta go look and say, okay, <laughs> if I got to put hands on him, oh, no, where's, was, where's my win? All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, tie, I tied my shoes. Once I saw him, I had to tie my shoes up a little tighter. I was like, yeah, in case you get out of line. <laughs> no. Nah. Um, now, nah, first of all, man, thank you, one, for reaching out. Uh, secondly, thank you for having adult discourse oh, yeah. and, and conversation. And that's all I wanted. This was not about scoring internet points. I think it's yeah. so easy for people to get behind their screens. Yeah. And, and I just thought it was such a great conversation that as the owner of a women's sports team, Angel City, as someone who's been investing in the space now for the last four years, right. I think there's an amazing conversation to be had. And I'm just thrilled because, you know, y'all are having it. I hope you saw from me as well. I didn't. I was like, we're not going to do this on Twitter. I no. wanted to DM you yeah. and have the conversation. It was so great. When you think about the conversation we were having, it was about women's team sports. MPJ was sort of talking about the excitement factor as they could pair, I guess, in basketball. Mm -hmm. Right. And I spoke to him about what women were fighting for in basketball, at least, wasn't equal pay. Right. It was right. equitable pay. And it was the fair treatment as a professional. When you were listening to that clip, what was it that made you reach out and say, hey, RC, let's have a conversation? So I think you nailed a key point. I don't disagree with it. And I think it's a red herring when people say, you know, uh, the, the top uh, athlete in the WNBA should be getting paid as much as LeBron or whoever the top paid male athletes. It's a red herring because I think you're right. That's not what folks are asking for. And the why behind that is, I think, the more interesting question, which is if you look at I can't talk about the W as well as I can talk about like women's soccer, for instance. Yeah, you could bring but, it there for sure. But it's but not to cut you off. Please. And you look at the women's national team. Mm -hmm. They were a team that fought for equal pay, and equal treatment and got it. So yes. I just want to make that point. I stumbled into this. All right. I was not uh, I did not watch women's sports. I didn't watch tennis at all until I met my wife. That was the first time I watched a tennis match, hand to God. I knew you who know, she was. You, you're starting to, <laughs> to sound be very like, clear. You sound like another guy. We, no, we got no. in trouble for that. We, we got to be clear. I've been very on the record about this. I never, I thought, I, I was raised in a house where the NFL was the only sport, the only sport that mattered, the only sport you played, and tennis was a bullshit country club sport. Yeah. Quote unquote, sorry dad. But I, and I was just ignorant, but I was obviously very aware of who Serena Williams was. Okay. But I, I saw a match, actually the first day I met her for the first time in Rome, and I was sitting there just in awe because I didn't realize just how hard and intense a sport it was. It didn't, never came, I, we never watched it on TV and you just don't get the same effect. Needless to say, I'm a big fan now, but I came into that sport like, almost like a child with no impression of what was the men's game or the women's game. And what was so interesting was one, uh, we have a great case study in American sports. If you look at the US Open, even if there is not a Williams sister in it, more Americans watch the women's US Open final than the men. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you look at the top American tennis players of the last few decades, who's bringing in more money? Yep. It's the women. Yeah. And, and that's not to say women are better and men are worse. That's not to say it is that they are two different things. And what you had in tennis was a generational, two generational talents. Yeah. And you had a sport that was marketed to, that was invested in, that was made relevant for the American public. The American public was like, yo, we love greatness. Yeah. We love these women. Get them paid. Put them on television screens. And even to this day, more Americans are watching the U.S. Open women's final than the men. And that's the impact. And so what I think has been missing in all these other leagues is they're not started from, in tech we say first principles, they're started almost as like a, a well-intentioned charity yeah. and it hamstrings expectations because if you expect low things and you don't invest in it and you don't think about it with fresh eyes, you get bad re results. And that's what happened in soccer. And the only reason I got that so right, you know, Angel City was a million dollar expansion fee in 2019. Mm. Last, was it three months ago, a team in the NWSL the expansion, the right to have a team sold for $53 million. Yeah. So that's in four years. Wow. Now that's not just because of what we did at Angel City, but it started something. And the whole reason, I, I'm not that brilliant. I just realized to your point, every American knew that American soccer greatness 
was women yes. because the men have never been great. Yep. And I sat there thinking, well, damn, I can market greatness. <laughs> Americans love greatness. We all pay attention to these women every four years. Why are they not doing it during the rest of the year? Right. And what I found were a bunch of owners who again had low expectations. They had a team because their kid, their yeah. granddaughter liked soccer and it was a little side project. It was yeah. charity. And so it wasn't being marketed. It wasn't being invested. It wasn't being, and so it's not to say it's a magic wand, but I think you can look across the sports landscape and start to reimagine what makes these sports unique. Don't try to make them just the, the, the woman's version of the male game. Really think about it differently. And, and I think that's where the excitement is. And, and the, the women know, like at the end of the day, this is their time. And in the age of social, and this is my last part of my TED talk, <clears throat> if you look at the up and coming athletes in college, and let's use college basketball right now, run the numbers. Women. On run the numbers on followers, all right? Yeah. None of this is about what feels good. None yeah. of this is about charity. This is democracy. This is people clicking follow yep. on the largest social network in the world and saying, I would rather follow her, <laughs> for instance, than this dude. And so women athletes have such an edge in social because they create content, they create means we know women overperform as content creators than men. And they're going to be able to bring that into the market now with NIL. And it's, it's an exciting time, but it's going to look different. It should look different than the men's game. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a little bit of entrepreneurial spirit to, to set them up for success. Your background is tech, which yes. you guys believe in heavy disruption. Oh, yeah. and, and I wanted to ask a question, not just so we can be familiar, mm -hmm. but I recently got involved with the USL Sporting yes. Clubs Jacks. Yes. And uh, we're going to have a Division A women's team. So it's awesome. I, I believe in and I know the statistical data behind it that goes through this country. How do you disrupt mm. in, in the women's space? Like, how do you disrupt it? Well, I'll tell you what I did. And I, I and thank you. Like, so also, side note, I did. I co-founded a company called Reddit, which is allegedly going public soon. So no comments. But please, <laughs> please click on ads. Allegedly. He, he was, he was ready to ask. He, he was, ad ad he yeah. was ready yeah. to yeah. ask. Too. But, I wanted to. But I'll tell you, to. what what I got right in 2005 was the idea that people would want to consume news created by and sort of voted on strangers on the internet. People thought this was preposterous back then because it was unthinkable. But I, look, I was one of them. Google well, was my, I, so when my kid introduced me to Reddit, I'm like, am I gonna get spammed all day? I mean, but it's it an amazing- look, I, I was not a great designer. It was, we need to, we've, we've improved the UI since. But I was at the right place at the right time with an idea that was where things were headed. And so in women's sports, the first thing I did in soccer, and then there's another project I wish I could announce right now, but I can't yet. Uh, that's in another major sport that y'all will hear about soon. But I, I talked to the best women athletes. And again, I'm lucky because like, you know, they'll respond to my emails. Mm -hmm. And I just get on the phone, I just ask them questions and I take notes. So I'm doing product research, just as if I'm building a new piece of software. And I'm asking the very best, what if you could imagine fresh eyes, what, how would you design a league? How would you do the marketing of your team? How would you tell your story? What are the things that excite you and other great players? And then work backwards from there. And then I ask dumb questions like, would it be crazy to have uh, carpets like for walk-ups? Because I see all these guys in the NBA, no disrespect. I've got some good <laughs> friends of mine who are very fashionable in the league, but I'm watching, I'm seeing these images go viral and I'm like, are people really paying that much attention to what these guys are wearing? But yes, they are. Yeah. And in the same token, I'm like, well, we have a bunch of amazing athletic women who love fashion. My hunch is, not a rocket scientist, my hunch is people on social media will like that content and they genuinely care about it. And so we, it's, been, it's been sitting with the, the, the sort of the power users, the most valuable, the, the sort of best players, literally taking notes, asking dumb questions, taking their feedback, and trying to do something that actually gets them excited and, and thinks about the sport a little differently. Um, and I, it's, it's been so rewarding to see too, because there is this, I'm, I'm speaking a little out of turn, but like so many women athletes are forced to basically just be role models. And that's great. Whether you have a son or a daughter, that is great to say, look at that athlete, they're a role model, they're awesome. But women, just like men, are a whole range of things. Yes. And male athletes are given so much flexibility and freedom to be clowns, to be party animals, to be so intensely focused, to be so many other things. And I think it is so good for this shift now 
that we get to see this diversity of personalities because it's actually just better marketing. It's better storytelling. And there's, there's more fans that want to engage in that. And these women are like, they, they want to be all of those things. They don't want to just be the role model or the, you know, that, that sort of one dimensional person. And, and, and it, it's funny, you know, I might always ask crazy questions, but like the Reddit thing, yeah. even with the social media stuff, bro, yeah. like it's worth what, 10 billion now? Uh, well, we're going public at five, allegedly. But uh, you know, it depends. Like uh, allegedly, between, allegedly, yeah, allegedly. I really, I you know. But with that, with, it, like, it, it start, it started. Great day for us. What was what yeah. is the women in college? What was it? Facebook. Yes. And it just kept going. Like how how did you know? You're a uh, genius businessman. You're oh, very humble, you. but thank you're a genius you. damn businessman. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, record just five, that. just just five billion. <laughs> record that. Just five billion, not ten billion. <laughs> I've been sucked, but, but you're look, a genius. Oh, it's like, all recorded. Those, those social sites, like, yeah. how how did you know that was going to happen, dude? I really, I didn't, and I looked to guys like Zuck, who started a year or two earlier, and I see how he moved. He was in another level. That's why Facebook or Meta is worth what they're worth. Um, I got a lot of things right. No. I, I got enough things right as a first time CEO. I got a lot of things wrong, but like the, the crucial part was as someone I'm 40, when I was growing up, I learned so much on the internet for free. I learned how to program from strangers on the internet. I learned uh, about video games from strangers on the internet. And so it was a given for me that people would want to be informed and educated by strangers on the internet. And that was the, the heart of what made social media so like different was normal just because I was like the earliest possible adopter and I grew up in that generation. And, and I think for a lot of folks, I think if they're being honest, they would tell you it's, it's part of just the timing uh, and then seizing that opportunity. And then I sold, I sold Reddit a year and a half in, then I got to come back in 2014 to take it out and come back as chairman and turn it around. And, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. To he see was excited. He's clearly it. on Wall Street bets. He said, yeah, very, I, I was going to go there. Excited. Next. I wanted to go there uh, next. You, sure. you mentioned Wall Street bets yes. right in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, yeah, obviously the AMC deal. How yeah. how how did that help uh, um, put more eyes on Reddit? Because I, I snuck over there to try to get some insight because I was an AMC guy. Yes. To well, the I mean, moon. Between that AMC GameStop to the moon, the tendies, I. Look, it's, uh, it was a lot of attention, some of it good, some of it less good. I think the bigger, the, the bigger takeaway, and I finally saw the movie, uh, Dumb Money, which was, I thought, pretty good, pretty darn good. I thought it was pretty good. Right? It was solid. And, and I think it, it, what it hit that I, I was, was most, my biggest takeaway is there are still, there were and there still are, so many people who feel like this financial system clearly is rigged. Mm -hmm. And there's a... There's such a tenuous relationship in this country, man. I've benefited so much as an entrepreneur from it. And so I still, my, my story is in its own way, a kind of the American dream. But I also know that unless people believe in it, unless people believe that if they have a great idea and they're early and they're right and they take a risk that they can get rewarded, unless enough people believe in that, the whole damn thing falls apart. And that was such a glaring example of the system not working like it was supposed to and being rigged. And you know, if, if Reddit could help expose a part of that, great. Uh, but it's, it's wild. Like, do not take financial advice <laughs> from strangers on the internet. But you know, to the extent that it's you know, interesting, entertaining, I think it's great. But it, it brought a ton of people to the platform who were like you, like, what the hell is this? And, yeah, I am you know. less interested in money than most people in life, um, but I'm very interested in the conversation that got us here. And then you feeling strongly as someone who owns uh, a women's team in soccer, you feeling strongly enough to say, hey, RC, let's have that chat. Were you always this level of an advocate of women's sports before marrying uh, the most dominant tennis player of our time? Absolutely Who not. just happens to be a woman. <laughs> I was absolutely not at all. And frankly, I didn't even pay much attention until like outside of tennis until it was 2019 when I, I started mouthing off on Twitter. A lot of great ideas start there because I saw I saw a team had just sold in the NWSL for like three million dollars. And I was, I was like, the math doesn't math like there are players on this team who should be generating who already their own personal brands should generate at least that much a year. How is a whole team only worth three? And then my, my you know, entrepreneurial brain was like, the math ain't math, and this is a thing that, that I could build on and fix. But to your point, 
I think having a front row seat to greatness, and then let's not forget my sister, Venus, yeah. having a front row seat to that greatness, and then also seeing still, in spite of all that, the things, the barriers, the bullshit, I, I hate when people say like, oh, I'm a girl dad. I am, a, I, I have two daughters. That's not the reason I care about this stuff. But there's some part of me that when you see what your wife has gone through, the bullshit she's dealt with, the stuff she's overcome, someone you love and who's the mother of your two children who are also daughters, you can't help but feel a certain way. And then also candidly, I just like being right. Part of the reason I tweet all this stuff, when I first bought that team, I had hundreds of people in my replies telling me I was gonna lose all my money, I was an idiot, no one watches women's sports, you're dumb. I screenshotted every one of those tweets and put them in a Dropbox folder. And so now whenever we sell out, whenever we need another record milestone in revenue, I quote tweet and I tag the guy and I thank him. I thank him so much because one, I'm petty, but two, that's the kind of, that's the kind of messed up person I am. I love this stuff and it just, it's, to have it, like I said, I like being right. And then to have it be about a thing I obviously feel personally invested in is, is the best. Another question I would have is, Serena Williams is not only a woman, she's a black woman, Yes. right? And there are things culturally that you don't know, you don't understand, you sometimes can't even be aware of if you're not presented with it yeah. in the daily way that your wife, and I love the fact that you said your sister, not sister-in-law, Venus Williams is as well through some talk a little bit about some of the things you've had to learn and support Serena through that only black women deal with. See, I thought I thought you were going to ask me how long it took me to learn how to use a washcloth, which would have been a Bro, fair. Bro, you didn't use a washcloth? Which would have been a fair. You, uh, you wash with, we wash with our hands. Uh, you wash with your hands too? I don't need no washcloth. No, that's actually, the that's the half of you. That's not the the whole of me. Need, you don't need no washcloth. The soap is self cleaning. <laughs> the bar of soap is self cleaning. I it's not self cleaning. I now use a washcloth. It's like the movies, I, right? You started using a washcloth. I know. Yeah, absolutely. Full on, man. I'm oh, trying to stay married. You can't let them bring it to that side. No, that's the right. Take that bar of soap. It's practical. It's. It, I feel a lot better. About nah, it. Serena was like, <laughs> Serena was like, you not finna touch me yeah. with the same hand you put yeah. in your ass crack. Yeah. And and, like, and, and, and the they got is self -cleaning And they got people. two daughters, so yeah. you know they touching each other. I, <laughs> I really, I really have to yeah. had to level up there, but. Uh, you're absolutely right. Look, and this is, I look, it's a, it's a, there's certainly a dynamic there, right? I am a white dude. So I, I get afforded privileges. I'm a tall white guy, as you mentioned, I, you know, this tall dudes even get a higher salary. Uh, so I have everything stacked in my favor my entire life. All right. And I know that. And so I know I have blind spots and I'll tell you, you know, even six years into marriage, I, I hit a, a landmine every week or two. And it's not, I mean, it's nothing crazy, but there are moments where I, I, and I appreciate it. It doesn't always feel good in the moment, but I appreciate it when she checks me on stuff because I also know I'm role modeling behavior that my kids are watching who are black girls. And I think it's, um, it's been eye opening and I'm grateful for it because I'd like to think every time I feel that little pain, I get stronger, I get better. And I think it helps me just even navigate the world better. But at the end of the day, I, I probably as an outsider would have thought, you know, I would have seen the movie. I would have seen Ken Richard, great movie. I would have read the stories. I would have seen all the stuff like anyone else had been like, wow, they overcame so much. But to see the things I've now seen, to, 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 to be as close to it now, to have felt it, especially about someone I love, Man, it's it is infuriating, and and you know obviously there are things the rest of the world doesn't even know about that that I have now heard about, seen what, and it's um, yeah, it's fucked up. And then to realize then a story that people do know is everything Serena went through in childbirth, and you know she nearly died. She had to self-diagnose this pulmonary embolism, and and so I'm there in the hospital room. It's supposed to be the you know best moment of our lives. Our daughter was born happy, healthy, great. And Serena's not feeling right. And she's trying to convince these nurses, like, hey, I, this, something's not right. I think I, 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 think I might have a, a PE, pulmonary embolism. And, and the nurses aren't taking her seriously. 
Wow. And I'm standing here saying like, please, like listen to my wife and not knowing I, I'm clearly not a doctor, but all I know is my wife is in distress. She has, to, she's literally prescribing herself the medicine. She's like, get me on a heparin drip, put it in. And, and you know, they ran the scans, they found these, she did have some peas. Thankfully we stopped them, they had to put a stint in, it was all this crazy shit. So here's an experience for someone who I'm thinking, okay, we're in the best hospital we could be in. We have all the resources we need. I have, we, we have everything you could possibly hope for, but because she's a black woman in America giving birth, there's a higher risk of mortality. There's a higher risk of complications. And even as she shared that story publicly, I, we were both floored because then more stories came back, more research came back, more of a conversation started happening at a national level. And, uh, and yeah, that's, it, it's, that is, that is, you know, a moment when I think we all as a country could agree, we should be protecting the lives of moms and kids. If we are a country that cares about family, that, that should be priority zero. And yet there's a huge disparity in this country. And that's the thing that like, I would have, I would have maybe hopefully noticed, but now I feel viscerally and, and I, it, it's the, um, yeah, it's a perspective that, like I said, I'll, I'll spend the rest of my life trying to understand, but I'll never, I'll never that's, that's, but that's a, that's a beautiful sentiment, man. It talks about love and mm -hmm. it's also what the world should be like. We should be able to learn from one another. We should be aware enough to accept that we don't know everything. And so I appreciate you sharing that story. Well, and uh, Alexis, you. we're here um, having this conversation uh, because of your fight to combat inequality in women's sports, you know, to help the ladies. Uh, but you also are fighting to combat inequity worldwide through entrepreneurship, through your family foundation, 776.org. Yes. yes, thank can you. you. Can you speak to that a little bit for us? Absolutely. So I kicked it off, $20 million. We just hand out $100,000 to 20 amazing young people every year from literally all over the world. Anyone can apply, no strings attached. And we started with climate. Uh, we're gonna be expanding and creating new programs for some other disciplines, but I figured, okay, this is an existential threat. If we don't say, if we, if we fuck up the planet, like we're, we're fucked, so let's start there. And we know that all this climate change disproportionately affects marginalized communities to begin with and vulnerable yeah. communities to begin with. So we start there. We were only two years in now. We're about to announce the third round. We're about to take the third round applications in a month. Um, but that's just the, I, I, I hope that will be a big part of my legacy because the one thing I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at starting companies. I get much better sleep giving money to people starting companies. Uh, and, and it lets me scale my experience and my network. And I want to spend the rest of my life trying to invest in CEOs who are much better than me, solving much bigger problems than just, you know, finding hilarious stock recommendations. Uh, and, and that'll be my legacy. And, and I am a very, if it's not obvious, competitive person. And I know my wife is going to have, or my kids are going to have lots of people coming up to them saying how amazing their mom is, which they should. But I want them to come up and say nice, nice stuff about me too. Hey, your no. daddy, I. Right. Your I daddy, good. You. I need to post so, up, so, your dad's all right. Where can oh, you direct you, them? Where can they go to submit applications? Oh yes, 776.org. I got the numbers, very simple, just 776.org. The applications open up uh, by the end of March, but just bookmark it now. And I just, I, there, there is, I'm so inspired by especially young folks. We have, we have applicants as young as 18 years old who are just like, whether they're doing amazing things in industrial research, uh, biochem, like it's it's awesome. And, hey, uh, hey, big bro! Done. Like I, you see, we pointing at each other because they know what I gotta ask. Right. I need the whole story on how the hell you got Serena. <laughs> you are uh, my winning you, personality, you good at make, bro. You good at making money. You're a great businessman, but now you got Serena. I need the story. I it was it was luck, man. I I came back to Reddit. I told you in 2014, mm -hmm. I was working myself just bad. I, I was, I was in the office way too much. And my head of comms told me to go speak at a conference in Rome in April. And I was like, there's no point. Like no one is trying to spend money on Reddit right now. It's a waste of time. And she just said, no, you gotta go. Cause like you're burnt out. Like you're crispy. Just go <laughs> take some time. So I did that first night there. I bailed on the conference cause I was speaking the next day and I went out, I just got some drinks, met up with some people. I overslept the next morning because I was hung over and I'm addicted to coffee. So I went downstairs and the Italians there were just like, oh, sorry, the breakfast is closed. But if you want coffee, just go sit outside by the pool. So I bring my laptop, obviously. I sit down, I order my coffee. 
And, uh, and there's a table next to me and this Australian guy uh, out of nowhere is just like, I might as a rat at your table. And I was like, a rat? I was like, dude, I'm from Brooklyn. I see rats all the time. It's fine. Like, it's not going to bother me. Because I actually thought he saw a rat. But the woman next to him then turns around and she says, oh, you're not afraid of rats. And I was like, no, really, it's not that big of a deal. And I look at her and I'm like, oh, shit, it's Serena Williams. <laughs> I was like, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's Serena. But like, why is she here in this hotel right now? And, uh, and I, I, she asked if I was here for the tech conference. And I was like, yeah, because it was at the hotel. I said, yes. She said, who are you here to see speak? I said, nobody. I'm speaking. She said, oh, okay. Hey, hey, hey okay. I'm speaking. Yeah. No, All right. <laughs> and she was like, so what do you do? And I said, oh, I started this company called Reddit. I'm the executive chairman. And she, she lied. She was like, oh, yeah, Reddit. I know it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> but but uh, we struck up a conversation. We chatted. And she said, listen, my assistant, the Australian guy, was trying to get you to move because that table was for the rest of my team. My coach, my hitting partner, they're all supposed to sit there. I said, that's fine, they can join me. I'm having my breakfast, we're having a conversation, that's fine. And we chatted, you know, we hit it off enough that after she left to go train, uh, her agent just, you know, was also at that table, came over and was like, hey, do you wanna see a match tonight? Serena's playing, and I said, well, I don't really like tennis, but okay. Like and you played this move. Honestly, that was though, it. You, it was you, true though. You I actually like, though, you actually sort of laid it on the table twice. <laughs> yeah. She asked you who you came to speak, and you was no, like no. me, yeah. right? And then you was like, oh, mate wanted you yeah. to move, yeah. and you said no, they can join me. Yes. As, yeah, you laid it I mean, on the I, table I, twice. Big actually, man. Big congratulations. I think this was an accident. Come on I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm on now. <laughs> no, I need, I need the rest of it. No, but I, I you know, we, we, we caught up after the match. We talked for a little bit. We were trying to meet up, and I was like, ah, I'm meeting some other people. So we didn't connect. And, uh, and then we were texting, and I was back in the States now, and she casually mentioned, she's like, oh, you know, I felt bad. You didn't get to see me play very well. I was injured. I'm going to be playing in France in a week or so. You should come out and see it. And I thought, you know what? All right. So... I told her, I was like, hey, you know, I'm actually in town. I was in Paris that next weekend. I was seeing some friends and I was like, it'd be great. Take you out to lunch, take you out to dinner. Let's, let's, let's meet up. And uh, <laughs> she did not believe that I had actually shown up. She, and I learned this after the fact, this was an LA invite. Y'all familiar with this? No. She, she told me she wanted me to come out, but she didn't actually mean it. Because apparently in Los Angeles, people say things they don't mean. And what I said to her was, listen, I, as an entrepreneur, you can't say things and not mean them. You have to do them or else people aren't going to take you seriously. You will fail. So you say that. I interpret it. And like, I got friends in Paris. We don't need to hang out. That's fine. But it's your loss. That was my mindset. Right. And then I thought also, honestly, I was like, worst case, if the story I have, my best friends are still the guys I've known since I was five. Right. These are the guys in my group chat. And worst case, I was going to come back to the guys and be like, yo, I went all the way out to France to go on a date with Serena and she totally ignored me. That's a great story. That's still a great. There's no downside to that. I'm still yep. going to have a good time. Hey, can I, can, I, can I just tell you something? Yes. That is the richest damn story I've ever heard about love. We had Gail King on and she like said a dude borrowed $4,000 from her. And then Oprah was pissed off because she was like, I wish you to ask for $40,000. <laughs> She goes to weddings oh, with Michael Jordan. So you were asked to go on a date in France and you don't live there, right? Well, no, I'm, she, I, I'm just going to show she up. She proposed. She was like, the next time I'm in Paris, you should come see me play. You don't say that to broke people. Uh, I mean, right? but you're right. Like, you like the, the rest of the homies, I don't know, maybe yeah. the rest of the homies on your group chat yeah. have also invested no, in things. Exactly. No, no. Say like, if she would asked one of the other homies, yeah. he would have been like, I'm going to catch you when you come back to LA. <laughs> to so I just want you to know the story <laughs> that you have told, none of these people out here can relate to. RC, let me catch you in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> but man, we, we appreciate you Beautiful so much. Um, oh, this was really here. enlightening, bro. And if you will have us, we love to come out and do a show with both of you and have more well, time to have an expansive conversation. All right. Well, I can't I can't promise for her, but let's keep talking. Let's or you can take me to France and we kick it, too. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll start you there. <laughs> you, you, you fly JetBlue? Uh, I still actually the mint. 
Mint Jet Blue is it's fantastic. Really nice. Do not sleep <laughs> on Mint Jet Blue. You ain't flying no damn Jet Blue. <laughs> but you gotta sleep on it. Appreciate it's you, man. Mint. <laughs> Good time. That was amazing, man. You smart as hell, man. Thank you. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you.